everyone, this is Barbara Howard and welcome to my podcast. Today is January the 28th, 2021 and this is episode number four. So what's been going on with me? We had a fantastic workshop last week and I mentioned it on the last podcast on um, uh, episode three that we were having an aspiring authors and writers master class and workshop. It was it was just phenomenal. A wonderful group of creatives who were publishers, ghost writers, editors, people who write technical nonfiction, people who write children's books, you name it. It was just wonderful. If I if you're listening and I met you during that workshop, I want to just give you a special hello. It was it was just fabulous. If you missed out on that, you need to find Dr. Elijah Nicholas on either Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram or send me a message and I'll refer you over to him because you don't want to miss the next one because little birdie says we might be doing that again. And I hope that we do because it was just so much fun, such great information. Everyone shared some fantastic tips and insights and advice and wisdom. It was great. I can't say enough about it. But let me move on. (laughs) I also wanted to mention that the audiobook for my children's book, um, A Day A Day for the Animals, is in the quality assurance process right now with um, Audible. So hopefully it will get through that without any uh, hiccups and it'll be available very soon. Again, there are discussion questions included in the paperback and the Kindle version and the narrator also included those at the end of the audiobook. I apologize if my voice is a little scratchy. We've had a lot of changes in our weather. Either it's very warm or we have what they call a wintry mix, which means ice, snow, freezing rain. <laughs> so I'm nursing my voice a little bit today. I was I was a participant in a book club over the weekend. And it was very interesting, and I wanted to bring that to the podcast today. We discussed Jennifer Lewis's memoir, um, The Mother of Black Hollywood. And I'd love to hear your opinion about it. It is not a new book by any means. I started out reading it uh, in text version, and then I switched over to the audio format because I was running out of time, and I was able to speed up the... the, um, you know, the tempo of the uh, of the audiobook to try to get through it quicker. And I still did not finish it. But the reason is because I stopped enjoying the book. And I'm going to tell you why. There is, um, there's a portion of the book at the beginning where she talks about her history on Broadway. And I really, really enjoyed learning some of the behind the scenes that happened in the early part of her career that I was not aware of. I only really know her for her her work in in television. However, she did a lot of um, name dropping and what I consider not a a positive light. Um, She was um, constantly in and out of relationships. Um, She had a lot of sexual partners and she would either be friends with someone and then hate them one minute, love them the next minute. And I understand that she has some mental health issues that she's been very open about. And so that, of course, lends to some of the the behavior patterns that I thought were quite disturbing, especially during those years when um, the AIDS epidemic uh, hit America and so forth. So I was very concerned about her behavior and I did not like a lot of the um, calling people by their names. They're, 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 um, I believe there's a way to tell a story uh, and talk about what happened in your life without necessarily pulling other people into it. That was a sticking point during the discussion uh, at the book club 
there was about half of the group that felt like the story was her story was all over the place we couldn't couldn't follow it um and that she was constantly dropping all of these names and we thought it was disrespectful i fell into that camp <laughs> and then the other side of the of the group was saying it's her story she can tell it any way she wants to it doesn't matter um you know, she could get permission to, to use their name. And I said, well, quite a few of those people were no longer living. And I just felt like if you're going to um, include them, they should be around to be able to defend themselves or tell their side of the story. And that's not the case for several, quite a few of those people. So that was where we were split. And it showed in the overall rating that the group gave to the book, because we couldn't seem to agree on that point. The other part of it for me is, and we did discuss this, um, what was the purpose of writing the memoir? And there's so many things that we could speculate. Uh, of course, she has her reasons and and the reasons that she tells us, and it could they could be the same thing or they could be totally divergent reasons. Um, because she is in show business. She did narrate the book, which was very interesting to hear her her story in her own voice. But the way we saw it was that she she wanted to bring to light the fact that she's bipolar, the fact that she had this erratic behavior and what it cost her and what she's doing to, to uh, come into her own healing and to help others to realize that there's no shame in getting help if you find yourself in um, in these types of challenging, you know, um, being able to control your emotions and and the other the underlying causes for that because there are quite a few few things in her life in her early life as a young girl um, that cause a lot of brokenness. So she brought a lot of those things to the surface, and that for me ties right back into. If this is the purpose of the story, if this is the purpose of the memoir, is to help bring to light and shed light on a very important topic like mental health, then why are we being dragged through uh, all of this other, all these other shenanigans is what, <laughs> is, is what I would say. I think that uh, uh, the editor could have, could have done a better job of steering her away from um, some of the content in such detail. I'll put it that way. Um, so like I said, we were in two camps, two totally different camps. People who said what I just said, that, you know, uh, her publicist or her whoever handles her, her agency could have done a better job of advising her on the content and the details that she provided, in, especially in the early part of the book. Uh, and then the other side of the of the of the group that thought it's her own voice. She's telling her own truth. Uh, she can say whatever she wants about whoever she wants, however she wants to. <laughs> so there you have it. I'd love to know what you, you know if you read the book. I'd love to know what you think about it. But just in general, when someone is writing a memoir, do you think it's okay that they can just? tell it the way they want and you know no holds barred doesn't matter what anybody thinks doesn't matter how it impacts anyone else just you know you own it you you can do whatever you want with it um so hmm, something to think about i know that there are quite a few good resources out there and courses to help you when you're developing a memoir the other thing that i had i struggled with with this particular book is the timeline was so, I don't know how to describe it. You didn't know what decade you were in half of the time. And a few other people mentioned that as well. Um, that was what we call being all over the place. We didn't know we were in the seventies or we were in the nineties or, you know, where, where were <laughs> it? It's not like a movie where you can look and see how they're dressed. <laughs> <laughs> or what the automobiles look like or something like that. It was like you were just reading along and like, what year is this? Where, where, you know, the next minute, you know, she's talking about her childhood. So it was just, 
And and people say, well, that's how her mind works. And I said, well, that's that's all well and good. But if you're writing this for a reader to be able to engage in your in your story, in your memoir, then you have to keep your reader in mind. And I think for someone like me who writes fiction, that's important to me to always keep the readers in mind. And my slogan that I say to myself, my internal mantra is respect the reader. That's why I don't like to um, come up with a lot of cliches and um, tropes that people are tired of reading. (laughs) You know, I want to keep it fresh and interesting. So in this case, I don't think she respected the reader in, um, in the way they did the timeline of the story. So... So much for that. That was our little book club discussion. And like I said, it got quite um, raucous is the word I will use for that. In my Kindle right now, I'm reading Walter Mosley book, The uh, Devil in a Blue Dress. I don't know if I'll get to finish it because I'm also uh, beta reading for a couple of authors and I need to get through those as well. I'm not going to mention the titles of their books because they're, um, like I said, they're, they're just getting through the editing process and getting feedback. If you're not familiar, a beta reading is when you hand someone your manuscript before it's actually published to the general public for consumption. And uh, you get feedback, and it also gives us a chance to prepare our comments and reviews. But we can provide feedback and comments ahead of time to the author. And I'm honored to do that. So I have two of those that are sitting and waiting for me so I need to get those done so if you want to communicate with me you can go to my website at barbarahowardmedia.com my books are listed there if you want to find out more about them or where you can purchase them just click on the picture and it'll take you right over there thank you again so so much for listening I appreciate everyone and I'm now on iHeartRadio so hello iHeart people (laughs) <laughs> so good to hear your voices um, when I get to communicate with you through Zoom and through Facebook Lives and um, and sometimes on YouTube. But for now, I'll just read your comments and respond that way or by email. Thanks again so much for listening. I appreciate you all so much. Be well, and I'll talk to you again real soon. <laughs>